guys, welcome back to the Friday Q&A. As a follow-up to my Q&A on dark spots and melasma, um, I wanted to focus today's Q&A on the most frequently asked questions that I've been getting here on the channel with regards to uh, dark circles under the eyes and if I can make any recommendations for how to mask them, creams for dark circles under the eyes, etc., etc. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a dermatologist and I film day in the life of a dermatologist vlogs as well as skincare uh, Q&A videos focused on a skincare concern and most frequently asked questions, which has been every Friday. I also have a very minimalistic approach to skincare and my everyday skincare routine for myself, which I share with you all in my skincare routine videos, which I encourage you to check out. So with that, let's get started. And in today's video, I'm going to be uh, talking all about the causes of dark circles under the eyes um, and what sort of creams there are available and do the creams work as well as what interventions are available. So at first glance of a human face, our perceptions regarding a person's fatigue, wellness, and age are strongly rooted in the aesthetics of the eyes. Therefore, it's not surprising that one of the most pervasive cosmetic concerns is with regards to dark circles and discoloration underneath the eyes. And our concerns with dark circles under the eyes are reflected in a substantial cost investment from society in interventions in cosmetics aimed at concealing dark circles under the eyes. So what's causing your dark circles? Well, there are many, many, many factors that contribute to the appearance of dark discoloration under the eyes. First of all, the quality of the skin itself. Eyelid skin is one of the thinnest types of skin on the human body. And as a result, deeper structures like small blood vessels are simply easier to see. Depending on the natural anatomy of your face as governed by your genetics, the visibility of these structures may be more noticeable. Also, it's very easy for fluid to accumulate in the small confined compartments around the eyes, particularly in the setting of chronic rubbing of the eyes, irritation from cosmetics and eye creams, and you may have already noticed that eyelid swelling can be more noticeable after consuming high salt foods. Additionally, it's more noticeable in the early hours of the morning, making you feel like perhaps you didn't get good rest. This simply reflects transient fluid retention around the eye. And oftentimes it can impart a purplish color under the eyes. This is due to the underlying muscle tissue or the orbicularis. Our underlying facial ligaments, bony structures, and deep subcutaneous fat tissue also influence the natural contours around the eyes and orbital rim, as well as hollows. Natural contours and hollows around the eyes lend themselves to shadowing when light is reflected from these contours and concavities, especially in these areas around the tear troughs. Overhead lighting can really worsen the noticeability of these shadows, whereas direct lighting can mitigate them substantially. And I'm telling you this for two reasons. First, something fun to bear in mind when you're considering taking photographs and selfies, but also always keep this in the back of your mind when a cosmetic company is presenting you with before and after images trying to sell you an eye cream. It's very easy to manipulate lighting, accentuate and mitigate angles of the face is a technique that can be utilized by a cosmetic company to trick the human brain into thinking that an after shot has mitigated fine lines, wrinkles, and dark discoloration under the eyes. So always keep that in mind when considering purchasing an expensive eye cream. Additionally, the skin around the eyes can become hyperpigmented or discolored by virtue of many, many factors, such as melasma, certain types of moles, and congenital pigment deposition in deeper structures, too much sun, hormonal changes, such as with pregnancy, changes in our menstrual cycle, and oral contraceptive pills, as well as certain medications. Additionally, use of topical compounds to grow the lashes, such as Latisse, can result in a reversible side effect of increased pigmentation around the eyes. So if you're using a product like Latisse to lengthen your eyelashes and you notice increased discoloration of, around your eyes, I encourage you to bring this to the attention of your healthcare provider. Furthermore, age-related changes, not only in the deeper structures of the skin, the elasticity and collagen framework of the skin, but also in our underlying bone structure, with time contribute to the noticeability 
of dark discoloration under the eyes. All right, so that's great. Now that we've gone over all the things that contribute to dark circles under the eyes, what can be done about them? Well, as I discussed, there are so many factors that contribute to dark circles under the eyes, whether it be your anatomy, underlying skin conditions, chronic irritation from too many cosmetics or eye creams, age-related changes, hormonal changes in fluid accumulations. There are many, many factors. So if you're really motivated to do something about the dark discoloration under your eyes, I encourage you to seek evaluation and management from a healthcare provider who can tell you exactly, based on their evaluation of your face, what the most likely factors underlying your dark discoloration are, as it will vary from individual to individual. Hence, there's not a global cream that can eradicate dark discoloration under the eyes. Physicians with a high level of training and expertise in cosmetic treatments for around the eyes include plastic surgeons, ophthalmologists or eye doctors, and cosmetic dermatologists. All right, so I encourage you for the first step to seek evaluation and management, but there are some makeups and concealers that can be helpful in masking dark discoloration under your eyes in the meantime. Mineral makeups can help blend the hue and to conceal undesirable dark pigment, and also makeups that add a little bit of green pigment can counterbalance any redness and mask that as well. Many cosmetic companies are adding optical diffusers to makeups and concealers. These optical diffusers function to reflect light away and conceal contour irregularities. Examples of these particles include boron, mica, nylon, polymethyl methacrylate, polyurethane, silica, silicone powder, talc, teflon, titanium dioxide, zinc oxide. However, I will underscore here that use of cosmetics eye creams and concealers comes with the added risk of increasing irritation to the delicate and fragile skin around the eye, as well as the potential for an individual to become sensitized to one of these ingredients and subsequently develop an allergic contact dermatitis to one of these ingredients. Irritant and or allergic contact dermatitis to cosmetic ingredients will only increase irritation increase inflammation, increase swelling, increase discoloration, and further exacerbate any underlying concerning discoloration under the eyes. My advice is to take a minimalist approach and skip this. In my opinion, probably the most effective and useful eye cream is a sunscreen. Now, many of you have asked me, should I be putting sunscreen around my eyes? And the answer is yes. Discoloration around the eyes is driven by and worsened by chronic sun exposure. Furthermore, furthermore, the skin around the eyes is susceptible to sun-related skin cancers. I do realize that many sunscreens are incredibly irritating, and many individuals endorse burning, stinging, watering of the eyes, and excessive irritation when trying to put sunscreen around the eyes. I recommend looking for a sunscreen that contains zinc and or titanium dioxide exclusively. This is a physical sunscreen a mineral sunscreen that physically blocks ultraviolet light, including both UVA and UVB, as well as some broader wavelengths of visible light, the light that we see in addition to ultraviolet light. Zinc and or titanium dioxide containing sunscreens offer a little bit more protection against discoloration, which is thought to also be due to visible light. And as I mentioned, the ingredients zinc oxide and titanium dioxide can also scatter light and mitigate the appearance of dark discoloration under the eyes, so it's a two-for. Using a tinted zinc titanium dioxide only sunscreen is a way also to mask the discoloration around the eyes while also protecting the skin around the eyes from ultraviolet light. Tinted sunscreens with the ingredient iron oxide have an additional added protective effect against visible light that could contribute to dark discoloration. Now I'll be sure and link down below some examples of sunscreens that are zinc titanium dioxide exclusively. Bearing in mind everyone, everyone is different, this may not be the case for you. And so I advise this, when purchasing and trying out new sunscreens, always, always keep your receipt. And if it doesn't work out for you, simply take it back to the store and get your money back. Topical creams for dark spots and melasma include those with the following ingredients. Retinoids or vitamin A derivatives, arbutin, kojic acid, soy, 
and niacinamide. Now I discussed these ingredients in my dark spot and melasma Q&A, which I encourage you to check out, and I will also link in the description box below. While these ingredients may potentially be helpful in dark discoloration around the eyes, again, there is always that the added risk of contributing to worsening irritation and potential for allergic contact dermatitis. These ingredients are not well studied in the setting of discoloration around the eyes, and there is simply inadequate objective data to say for sure with 100% confidence that any of these ingredients and products containing these ingredients are a worthwhile investment. One, one, one ingredient, however, uh, for under the eyes is our cosmetic creams with caffeine in them. Caffeine can transiently constrict the blood vessels around the eyes, improve eyelid swelling as a result of fluid accumulations, and transiently decrease noticeable blood vessels around the eyes. The key word here is transient. This is not a cure. And again, always comes with the added risk of increasing irritation and worsening the dark discoloration under your eyes. So I also get a fair number of questions about what sort of procedures can be performed uh, or interventions for dark discoloration under the eyes, and that is a great question. A variety of laser-based and light therapies have been studied for dark discoloration under the eyes depending on the underlying cause. These include intense pulse light, radio frequency devices, pulse dye lasers or vascular lasers that target the blood vessels around the eyes, and lasers that target discoloration around the eyes. Another option is medical tattooing. This should be performed by a physician who has training and expertise in performing this, as this is not without risk to you. Medical tattooing involves placing pigments in the deeper layer of the skin that can improve the color and contour around the eyes. Now, as I mentioned, the subcutaneous fatty tissue around the eyes also can contribute to the hollowness and the hollowness and contours around the eyes, exacerbating the appearance of dark discoloration under the eyes. And so a question that I get a fair amount about is fillers. And yes, fillers around the eyes can be helpful. Again, this should be performed by a healthcare provider with uh, training and expertise in uh, appropriate filler selection and appropriate placement of the filler in your skin as it is not without complications and potential risks to you when injected around the eye. And an additional surgical procedure around the eyes is simply fat transfer, which is the same principle as filler, uh, only it, make, it takes advantage of harvesting your own fat from other areas of your body and depositing it in the compartments around your eyes. I mentioned in the beginning that the anatomy around the eyes uh, that contributes to dark discoloration includes um, age-related changes in the, in the bony structure and ligaments. And so an additional procedure that you have probably heard about is a, a lid lift or a blepharoplasty. And again, this is best performed by someone such as an oculoplastic surgeon or an ophthalmologist uh, with expertise in, in this procedure and or a plastic surgeon. And lastly, an additional option is a surgical implant around the eyes, which also can be performed by, by such skilled surgeons. So those are potential uh, medical interventions for dark discoloration under the eyes, depending on what the, the causative, depending on what the causative factor is in your um, under eye discoloration. You know, I filmed this video with the hopes that, that you all uh, will take away from this that there's not a one-size-fits-all approach to dark discoloration under the eyes. There are a variety of reasons why you may have dark discoloration under the eyes. Um, can I recommend an eye cream? So it's basically impossible for me to recommend an eye cream. So my biggest piece of advice to you all out there struggling with this is, you know, in, in the United States and globally, Women in particular, but men as well, are investing thousands and thousands of dollars in eye creams. And if you take anything away from this Q&A, it's ditch your eye cream and invest in yourself. If you're bothered by the dark discoloration under your eyes to the point that it is affecting your quality of life, do something about it and seek evaluation and management by someone who can appropriately evaluate the cause and appropriately guide you on the best intervention for you based on your face, your anatomy, underlying medical conditions. That would be my biggest piece of advice. Um, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If you liked it, please give this video a thumbs up. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.